Hey there, welcome back to Sales Handy's Cole Email Masterclass. I'm Sanjana, a Cole emailing expert at Sales Handy. So in lesson two, we discussed about cold emailing, how you can create your cold outreach campaign, and the steps to follow before launching it. Now let's discuss the most important aspect of cold emailing, email deliverability. So in lesson three, we will learn about how you can set up your email account for higher deliverability and successful cold emailing. Lesson three is divided into three parts. The first part, which is this part, we will talk about the importance of deliverability. In the second part, we will talk about the impact of poor deliverability. And in the third part, we will talk about how you can increase your deliverability. Let's start from the very basics. Let us understand what is email deliverability. Have you ever sent an email to someone only to end up in their spam or junk folder? This is a common problem that can have a negative impact on your business goals and relationships. This mainly happens because you have bad email deliverability. Simply put, email deliverability is the ability of your emails to reach the inbox of your intended recipients. When your emails have a good deliverability, they're more likely to be seen and acted upon by your recipients. Before deep diving into email deliverability, let's look at some of the facts about deliverability. If you're like most people, you probably receive a lot of spam emails every day. It is estimated that nearly 85% of all emails users receive are spam. But as you do cold outreach, you can't afford to have your emails in the spam folder because that would defeat its purpose. Cold emails are indeed unsolicited, but they can effectively reach new clients if you look after the basics and the deliverability practices. Fortunately, there are ways to control your email deliverability and to avoid spam folders altogether. Now let's discuss the importance of cold email deliverability. Why is it so important? Why are all the cold emailing experts out there giving this particular topic so much importance? Email deliverability is a crucial aspect of any business's strategy in today's digital world. A high email deliverability rate means that more of your emails successfully reach your intended recipients, which can help you stay ahead of your competition and foster healthy relationships with potential customers. This in turn can lead to more conversions and higher return on investment. Additionally, having good deliverability standards is essential for maintaining credibility and reputation of your domain. Email service providers or ESPs take deliverability into account when determining which emails to deliver to users' inboxes so having a high deliverability rate can improve your chances of reaching your audience. Furthermore, email deliverability allows you to track and understand user behavior in depth. By analyzing the data on who is opening your email and engaging with your content, you can gain valuable insights and use this information to your advantage. By staying on top of your deliverability standards and using the data to your advantage, you can improve your chances of reaching your audiences and achieving your marketing goals. Now we will talk about the key metrics you should track to ensure good email deliverability. First, let's talk about bounce rates. This is the percentage of emails that are not delivered to your recipient's inbox. High bounce rate can indicate a number of things such as invalid or outdated email addresses on your list or problems with your sender's reputation. A bounce rate higher than 3% is generally considered too high and can compromise your deliverability. Next, let's talk about delivery rate. This is a percentage of emails that are successfully delivered to the recipient's inbox. A delivery rate of 95% or higher is considered good by most ESPs. If your delivery rate is lower than this, it could be an indication that your emails are being flagged as spam or that there are other issues with your sender's reputation. Finally, let's talk about spam rate. This is a percentage of emails that are marked as spam by the recipient. A high spam rate can be a major red flag for email service providers and can result in your account being suspended or even terminated. If your spam rate exceeds 0.08%, you should take immediate action to address the issue and improve your sender's reputation. Overall, tracking these metrics is crucial for maintaining good email deliverability. By keeping an eye on your bounce delivery and spam rates, you can identify potential problems and take immediate action to prevent them from affecting your sender's reputation. 
Before moving ahead with the next topic, let's first understand the differences between email deliverability rate and email deliverability. People often use these terms interchangeably, which is actually not correct. An email delivery rate is a measure of the number of emails that the mail providers' servers have accepted. This is a simple metric that tells you how many emails you've sent out that have actually reached their intended recipients. On the other hand, email deliverability is slightly more complex. It's a measure of where your emails end up after the mail providers' servers have accepted them. This can be influenced by a number of factors such as your sender's reputation, your domain reputation, and even the way your domain is set up. So in very simple terms, your email delivery rate tells you how many emails you've sent out that have been accepted, while your email deliverability tells you where those emails actually end up. So why is this important? Well, a high email delivery rate is a good indicator of the overall health of your email program, and your email deliverability is important because it determines the effectiveness of your emails. So before you start sending out cold emails, it's important to follow the best practices to ensure that your emails are delivered to your audience's inboxes. So here are a few pro tips from us. First tip is that you should always start your email campaigns with a low volume and then gradually increase it over time. This will help to prevent your campaigns from being flagged or suspended by email service providers. Additionally, don't make the mistake of expanding your email list too quickly. This can raise red flags and lead to deliverability issues. Before sending out high volume emails, it's important to warm up your domains by sending a smaller number of emails first. This will help establish your credibility and improve your chances of success. When it comes to deliverability, a good benchmark to aim for as a delivery rate is 95% or higher. This is considered good by most ESPs. Finally, it's important to understand both the technical and general aspects of email deliverability. By following these pro tips, you'll be well on your way to successful cool email campaigns delivered to your audience's inboxes. Now let's move on to the steps and basics to authenticate your email account. In this section, we will go over the steps and basics of authenticating your email account. Email authentication helps protect you from imposters and lets ESPs know that you are the original sender of the information. Here is a checklist of the leading factors that you need to keep in mind for your email authentication. It's highly important that you check on the given factors before starting out as ignoring them can land you in the spam folder no matter even if you have had your authentication in place. First, let's talk about sending volume. It's important to be mindful of how many emails you're sending at once as sending a large volume of emails in a short period can raise red flags with email servers and potentially lead to your emails being flagged as spam. Next up, be sure to avoid sending emails to blacklisted contacts. These individuals or domains have been identified as spam sources and can negatively impact your deliverability. Your sender's reputation is also a key factor to consider. Email servers take into account the reputation of the sender when determining whether to deliver an email. If you have a history of sending spam or low quality email, it's more likely that your emails will be flagged as spam. Spam traps are another factor to be aware of. These are email addresses that are specifically set up to catch spam emails and can negatively impact your sender's reputation if your emails are delivered to them. Next up, we have abuse reports. Abuse reports can also impact your email deliverability. If a recipient reports your email as spam, it can lead to your emails being flagged as spam and delivered to the spam folder or not be delivered at all in the future. Ensure that you also keep in mind something known as text to image ratio. The text to image ratio and the number of links in your email can also impact its deliverability. Emails with a high ratio of images to text or a large number of links are more likely to be flagged as spam. Text to HTML ratio is another factor to consider. Emails with a high ratio of HTML to text may be flagged as spam as they can be seen as attempting to hide content from spam filters. Finally, be sure to avoid using spammy words in your emails. These are words and phrases that are commonly used in spam emails and can trigger the spam filter. By keeping these factors in mind and following the best practices for cold emailing, you can increase the chances of your emails being delivered to the inbox and ultimately improve the success of your campaigns. Have you ever noticed that some of your emails don't make it to their intended recipients? 
This could be because of technical configurations known as DNS records. DNS stands for Domain Name System. These records play a big role in the deliverability of your emails. And if they're not set up correctly, it can really impact the chances of your emails being successful. Some common DNS records that can affect your deliverability include SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. These records help authenticate the sender of the email and prevent spam and phishing attacks. By properly configuring these DNS records, you can improve your reputation with email providers and increase the likelihood of your emails being delivered as intended. So if you're having trouble with deliverability, it might be worth taking a closer look at your DNS records. The first one is DKIM. One way to authenticate your emails is by using DKIM or Domain Keys Identified Mail. This system allows ESPs to verify that it was actually sent by the owner of the domain that it claims to be from. Here's how it works. When you send an email, a special digital signature is added to the message header. The recipient's mail server can then check this signature against a public key that's stored in the domain's DNS records. If the signature matches the key, the email is considered authentic and is delivered to the recipient's inbox. So if you're a business or organization that sends a lot of emails, it's definitely worth setting up your DKIM to gain ESP's trust. Next up, we have SPF. So now imagine you're hosting a big event and you want to make sure that only the people you invited are able to come in. That's where a sender policy framework or SPF comes in. It's like a virtual bodyguard that checks the guest list to make sure that only the people you've approved are allowed access. So think of an SPF as a way to protect your event or in this case, your email domain from unwanted or unauthorized access. The third DNS record is DMARC, which stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. This is a protocol that helps to protect email communications by bringing together SPF and DKIM into a single unified framework. By combining these two technologies into a single framework, DMARC allows email domains to set policies that specify how emails from their domain should be handled by the recipient's mail servers. This helps ESPs reduce spam and phishing attacks and helps to ensure that legitimate emails are delivered to their intended recipients. So BIMI is not a part of the DNS record. This is a completely optional extra layer of security that you can add for better deliverability. Have you ever noticed the logo or an avatar displayed next to an email in your inbox? That's called a BIMI or the full form brand indicators for messaging identification. Beamy is a way to verify that the sender of the email is legitimate and not a spammer or a fisher. So if you see a Beamy, you can trust the email is coming from a verified sender. Pretty cool, right? After knowing the importance of authentication, you must be looking for help with setting up these records. If so, I have some resources that might be helpful for you. Firstly, you can check out some videos on our YouTube channel for a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to set everything up. Additionally, you can also refer to a blog that goes into more in-depth on the topic. All of these links are provided in the description below. Let us know if you have any questions or need further assistance in the comments down below. And this concludes Lesson 3 Part 1. In the next lesson, we will talk about what exactly impacts email deliverability. So see you there.